Yeah, so I was at the grocery store the other day and I needed to get some milk. Oh, you're reminding me of this time. I was walking down the street. I was seven and I fell off of my bike. The number one thing that I can say that I see women challenged with is organizing their content. How to be clear and how to be concise. This is where I'm seeing most people really, really challenged. It's like, I've just asked you a question and all of a sudden I'm getting your life story and I'm not getting the answer to the question that I asked you. So I'm gonna be talking today on ways that you can be clear and concise with your public speaking. So number one, most important is to have confidence have agency over the process believe you belong at the table i remember there was a time where i was up for an anchor job and i actually had all the leverage in the world and when the contract was passed across the table and i saw the number that i was getting for my salary i didn't negotiate if I had to go back to my younger self in that moment, the one thing that I would have done is to have agency over the process. I would have asked my counterparts what that seat actually commands in the way of a salary. And I would have also said, this is a good place to start. As my friend Allison Taffel Rabinowitz teaches in the finishing school, anytime you get a salary negotiation or you get some kind of terms of agreement passed across the table, don't say thank you, say thank you this is a great place to start. Number two is to answer the question you were asked. The other day I was having a conversation with a member and she was going on and on and on about how she was challenged with her social media and she didn't know how to build a following. And I was like, hold on a second, let's stop. That's a lot of things. What specifically about your social media and your Instagram do you need help with? Well, as it turned out, she had an international business and she really needed to build her stateside presence. And that was really the question. But it wasn't until I challenged her that she was able to answer that. So the number two point here is to answer the question you were asked. And if you have to pause before you answer to collect your thoughts, do that. Number three is to bullet point your thoughts. I actually even do that before I do a video. I put all my bullet points on a little index card. I'll even scratch them down right before I do a phone call. If you're in an impromptu situation or you're actually gonna be planned and thought out in a meeting, have your bullet points on a card and just be able to keep your messaging to one thing or three things, but make sure they're bullet pointed out. Number four is to love your data. Use data to back up your bullet points, especially if you're speaking to a male audience. Men love data. I remember interviewing the founder of ClassPass, Bile Kadakia, and in that interview, she said that she had to, when she was pitching, get intimate with her data. And anytime she went into a pitch meeting, she made sure that she backed up any of her things about her business being viable with data. You don't need to inundate your audience, but how about three pieces of data. For example, right now I am filling for my public speaking masterclass and I needed to make the business case as to why corporate women need this right now. Well, I deferred to some statistics that were called by an, a group called Catalyst. Catalyst is a nonprofit that's dedicated to putting women in leadership. And they surveyed about 1,100 adults over the age of 18 and they found that 45% of women have difficulty speaking up in virtual meetings. One in five felt that they were ignored or overlooked when they were in a virtual meeting. And then three in five said that their prospects of getting a promotion are probably way lower now because we're in remote work environments. Those are the three bullet points that buttress the fact that you should take my public speaking masterclass, or as I like to call it, my art of influence masterclass. All right, now that I've laid out some of the challenges, I wanna share some additional points on what you can do to overcome them. If you're feeling that crisis of confidence, ask yourself these three questions and come up with a story, a story, a personal story that you can use to explain the answer. So the first question is, why do I deserve to be here? Number two is, why am I worth listening to? In other words, what's been my experience? What's about, what is it about my credibility? And why am I worth listening to? The third thing is, 
what is my expertise? You know, what is the one thing, if you put my back up against the wall, this is the one thing I wanna talk about all day. Now let's just say, for example, the topic you wanna talk about is wellness. The angle that you would take if you're a dermatologist is that I come to this from the perspective of being a doctor. You, your experience, so what is your expertise and what is your professional angle that you're coming at this with? And finally, make sure that you pause. Even if you feel like your thoughts are careening out of control, it is so okay to pause and leverage the power of it. Remember, one or two seconds in your mind feels like an eternity, but that's because your brain is going so much faster than you are talking. But take a second or two, it feels like an eternity in your brain, but it is not an eternity for your audience. Leverage the power of the pause. The final point that I'm gonna share is that I always see women apologizing. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, can I take a minute of your time? You don't need to be apologizing. In fact, there is a Google Chrome plugin that you can download, and the name of the app is Just Not Sorry, and it'll actually flag how many times you say I'm sorry in an email so that you can actively remove it. I actually did it myself and it was a game changer because I didn't even realize how many times I'm apologizing just because I responded to an email 24 hours later. You are well within your rights to do that. As one of my favorite mentors from when I was really young, Les Brown says, develop your communication skills. Because once you open your mouth, you are telling the world who you are. I'm currently filling for my Art of Influence Masterclass, which kicks off on February 17th. It's six weeks. You are going to practice presenting your wins in every single class and I'm gonna have a, an entire roster of compelling speakers that are gonna be speaking to some of the pain points that you have shared with me as a corporate woman. All you gotta do is go to info at ladydrinks.com to sign up and I can't wait to see you there.